as he comes for Dashan, I'm, I'm nearly forcing myself only to watch his feet because that's what he's saying I'm having to do. Suddenly, as he is in front of me, something changes totally in my mind. I am again that small little girl and I'm walking with my little hand in this big hand. I can only see some orange rope and two feet with whom I'm walking. And I feel like dancing. I'm just with him. No? He's going to do his work and I'm allowed to go with him. This is like being back in my childhood. When my father goes to work, my mother sent me in holidays with him so I could be with my dad. Swami has only taken that form for us to learn that that is what we are and slowly, slowly get to our divine being inside us. We all have that spark. There's nothing in life living without. We are creation. We are the sparks of the creator. <laughs> Sometimes anger can be useful also. Yeah. Now, it's not always negative only. In the right place at the right time, you might have to ventilate something which the other person is not liking. But you have to say it. We are also doing a job. We are also being part of the, of the vast human community. You don't have to accept everything. You don't become just a dull, empty-minded somebody. No, there are values in life. So I'm sitting there. I want to go and stand behind Swami and say, you sit here. So I'm sitting there. And I'm so happy just sitting there. Then he's talking to everybody as if in between, he's just asking this question. How is now? <laughs> now Swami is very good because I'm sitting right here at your feet. <laughs> I didn't think of anything else. Mind is blank. So now is always the omnipresence. Now. If I can learn to live in the now, then I can be in the now always. The Divine Lessons of Her Spiritual Teacher, Sri Satya Sai Baba. This is part two of our ongoing interviews with Maria Ha, a nurse, a longtime resident of Sai Baba's ashram, and now formerly a citizen of India. Maria Ha's plentiful lessons now become our own. Welcome to Soul Journeys. This interview was recorded in Puttaparthi, India, in January 2013. Maria Hopp, welcome to Soldiers. Yet again, it's been many years since our last interview. You're from Holland, but you're a 100% fully accredited Indian citizen today, working in Sai Baba's General Hospital in Puttaparthi, tirelessly as your endearing Seva to A little Baba. bit less than before. <laughs> a little bit less than before. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah. What's new? What's new is to say thank you for coming after so many years and seeing you again. So lovely to see you here and thanks for the beautiful work you are doing. Well, we oh, see... We, we are enjoying this away from everybody else. Now we get a chance to see and hear and listen to people who are like us experiencing Swami in their life. No? We, we come to Baba's Mahasamadhi. And after the Mahasamadhi, we come to see Maria Hop. <laughs> you are the embodiment of everything we aspire to become. Yes. That is a long way, I think, to go, but... No, uh, you've got a feisty character. Uh, you do have some, uh, what would you call it, Jody? Some, uh, I don't want to say spunk, but you stand up for what's right. You can get indignant when it's appropriate. I don't want to see angry, but indignant. But mostly, you're 99 and 99, 100% at equanimity, at pure love. And great humor. And with great humor, <laughs> which makes you one in a million. So we're happy to be in your presence. Yeah, I'm happy to be here also. And what's the most important message, just off the top of, the, of your head, that you think you have to impart to us today? I think what I experience is the most important in my life, is after the first interview and after coming to Swami here is to find out the real answer to who am I? Have you figured that out yet? I don't know if I figured it out but I have lots of uh, guidance from Swami like everybody else because he has been teaching him, our, us all his life that there are 
the three eyes in us, which one is the one I think, the other one is the one you think I am, and then the real one. And I became very interested in finding out who is the real me. And that is very important. And what do I have to do to get to the depth in myself to find out who is the real me? How are you doing with that search? I'm busy. I'm busy following, first of all, trying to become a good human being. There are, for everybody, some vices we are having which are quite on the surface in us, try and get rid of them. And Swami is giving his five pillars, Satyam, Satya, Dharma, Shanti, Prema, Ahimsa, to work. Mean? Satya means the truth. Dharma is right action. Shanti, peace. Prema, love. And Ahimsa, um, the right translation for that is... Non-violence. Non-violence, yes. Correct. If I am living my days with those five values somehow in my mind and become acquainted with what Swami really means with those, there are lots of sub-values, but there is one value which I thought is very important to learn, and that is love. How do I learn to live in love? For me, if I can learn that, then I've had the others also. So I'm concentrating on, especially when I'm off duty. When I'm on duty, I realize my mind is just there in the hospital, busy with the patients, busy with the colleagues. Whatever happens, I have to do. And when I come out, as if I'm stepping through a little door, like Swami was telling me one day, you're going out in a minute of your room and you will step outside. When you step outside, you're stepping on a stage in which I've given you a role to play. That's well And put. I'm writing the lines for you. Mm -hmm. So also when you think it's not correct what you have done or whatever, do it as good as you can. I will be the one who is correcting. I will be the souffleur also. He has been showing us <coughs> a fantastic um, <coughs> picture. Last year, no, the year before, 2011, the hospital staff was producing a small drama and by the male doctors and the lady doctors were lady staff uh, also the gents, not only doctors, it was a mixed group for the ladies also a mixed group. And we were allowed to perform in the Kulwant Hall. I was supposed to play and help them with the music and we were all singing. Then as we sat there waiting for <coughs> the devotees to come in, I just was looking at the Samadhi and suddenly I come in this slightly different perception. Then I know Swami is wanting to me to be alert or be awake. So then I saw there are these words, love all, serve all. In there is a tiny little window in my mind's eye and Swami is there smiling at me. <laughs> and on the stage, there is this little hole there where the souffleur is sitting and Swami was saying, if you forget the words, I will tell you. So I became so relaxed, I was supposed and wanted to sing with them in Telugu also. Swami, let these words come out of my mouth properly because I'm not a Telugu speaking person really. I'm learning slowly, slowly to pronounce the words. This kind of thing is what he meant when I come out of my room where I am with him, when I step out, I'm doing my role in my life, which he has given me and he wants me to do. That's beautiful. And that I have to do as good as I can. That's beautiful. So this is relatively recent. We want to take you back many years now. 
when you first mm. thought about becoming a Baba devotee, mm. and you in in your native country in uh, Holland, in Holland, yeah, you were a little reluctant to refer to him as anything other than Swami, because nobody talked about God in Holland. In in my <laughs> mind, there was really for many years already not really the word God, much more like. We as human beings, all together, are God. So, but I didn't call it God. Right, you didn't use the word. So, no. So fill us in with the rest of the story of you actually getting on an airplane and coming here to explore Sai Baba, this mm. Swami who lived in Puttaparthi, yeah. and what happened to you with Swami? I think in the other interview I've told a few stories. But not this one. But this one was a special one for me because he opened something in me through which I could see him as the Divine Master. And I was sitting that particular darshan when we still had only a very short part of the whole small arches are there, <coughs> sitting somewhere in the back of the lane. Okay. <clears throat> and Swami is coming out of the Purna Chandra and walking the lady's side. As he's right in front of me, I'm just looking at him, I'm not doing anything particular. Most of the time my mind goes blank when I see him and I just watch him where he goes. But I feel happy because I see him. And then suddenly I hear these words, God is passing by. <laughs> God is passing by, Swami, you're God, huh? And he, as if nothing has happened, he carries on walking, but a little, a few steps later, he turns his face around and he looks at me. I know he looks at me because I feel that contact from his eyes in my eyes, and I can hear him say, I really said that. So he said that. He said that. I really said, I really said that. And you heard him say, God is passing by. Correct. And you know that was meant for you. I could hear it. That means <laughs> it's for me to, to hear that. And how did that change you? You already said that was when you knew. But how else did that change It changes you? me. changed me at that time in such a way that I thought, Wow, I have not used the word God since I'm a small girl, I think. Mm -hmm. Because as a small girl, I was, a, I was loving the Holy Mary. Mm -hmm. Because a very nice little experience I had when I was a small girl. Tell us. Tell us more. Tell you. I don't know for whatever reason, this little girl I was, I might have been seven or eight years old. For whatever reason, I don't know. I see myself and I go to the church in our area, a Catholic church. I'm brought up in the background of the Catholic church. And I go in that church and there is nobody. I'm the only one who's in that church. Door is open, so I'm going inside. And I walk all the way up to the statue of the Holy Mary and I must have been praying for something or I must have been telling her something and as I'm standing there totally immersed in, in the presence of the Holy Mary for my feelings and suddenly I feel this very painful little prick here in my heart. I inside I say oh but at the same time, such a joy was produced inside me that I thought, how can that hurt? And I'm so happy. And I danced out of that church. Wow. <laughs> nobody saw you because you were there alone. There was nobody there. This was a very, very short but very sweet experience in which I never understood what this was, of course. But Whoa. that was my contact at that time. After that school time, when I started my nursing training, I got um, aware of how many people are suffering mm -hmm. in a way which I had not known before because myself, 
I felt <coughs> I had a quite good life. We were not very well off in our family. We were a big family, but there was always somehow music, sports, happiness. How big a family? Books were there. That is what my parents gave us mm. now to us to grow on. The sport, the music, and the books. How big a family? We have a grand family. I have nine brothers. Nine brothers. And three sisters. <laughs> and where are you in the Number order? Number 10. Number 10? Yeah. <laughs> it sounds Number like, 10, it sounds I have like... learned now, being with Swami, getting taught by Swami so many things. We are all zeros. Ah. No, we're all zeros. But if I am so smart, getting the chance to have a divine master, a god on earth, and put him in front of my zero, I get value. And don't forget yes. Mary opening up your heart at the yes. age of seven. That's right. That I learned later that that is what <laughs> happened at that time. Heart chakra opened. Because I felt so much. It felt like, like a stream coming out, like, like out of mountains, sometimes you see these, sure. uh, the springs, these the, springs yeah. coming out, it felt like that. But I was so young and so innocent, I was never even thinking of that anything special had happened, of course. Oh, that's great. By that time I didn't know. And, and Jody, what was that other question about that other subject that I know we really wanted her to talk about? We already did that, but I would like to ask a question. Yeah. Um, Maria, when you came to Prashanti for the first time, you said your concept of God was that we are all God, human, the human race is God? I had in my life, as well in my time in Holland, in Africa, in Denmark, always felt God is what we are. Yes. Oh, okay. And maybe God is much more than what we all together are, but we are presenting what God is. There are so many good things in people also. There is also, of course, the negative side in us. That is also why we are here to learn to deal with that. I'm sure that that is our task in this life, to minimize what is not divine in us yet. I think we can grow to our divine level in this life. With Swami there, we have the best chance to learn that. And that's important news for anybody watching this. I didn't ask my question yet. Okay. If, if, just for the camera, if, yeah. if we are all God, then how did you reconcile this being who said he was God? because he's also a human being walking around. And at that time I was never thinking of meeting and being allowed to meet a master. I was never in my life busy with spirituality as such. But at the time when that awareness was, when, when I was thinking about what is going on in the world, what is going on with me, what happens with me when I'm very happy, what happens with me when I'm sad, who are we? And where are we going? Why are we here? All those questions were there when I was in my teens. But there was never ever a person around me with whom I was discussing things like this or meeting somebody who would tell me. Then when I had good friends I would suddenly discuss little bits but I was aware that the other people were not thinking like that. So I thought, are you, I don't know, maybe I will find out one day. No. I can relate to that. Yeah. You can also <laughs> attend. Well, I think people yeah. thought I was slightly crazy because people I worked with for years or went to school with for years, they would, they would come back to me and they'd say, my impression of you, Ted, is that you would every once in a while just say, with complete innocence, who, are me? who, who am I? Why am I here? What is this all about? Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and I really meant it because it's almost impossible to understand yeah. when you dip below the surface. But an still, we need that awareness to, and the mind to, to become aware we that there are answers to these questions. We have to use the Maya 
use the awareness, use the ego, use everything we think is temporary. Because in principle, even that is divine. And has, Isn't it? has Swami given you solid answers? Does solid answers, huh? Yes, he did actually. But at the time he gave it to me, I was not able to understand it yet. Um, in the beginning, when I came to Puttaparthi and to Swami, asking him, would I be allowed to be a student from him? And will he teach me to get to know what is important in life? He came one day for darshan. There were two times he gave me an experience. This one time, I'm sitting in the darshan line, <coughs> and I'm asking this question to him also. I think I told it last time also. Who are you? And then suddenly he stands life size in front of me, standing with his hand out like this and saying, I am you and you are me. And he really said this to you? He really said this. This is what I can hear. He's standing right in front of me and he's giving darshan there. Uh -huh. oh. When I come with that question. Oh. I am you and you are me. And in another darshan, he had not come yet and I can hear him say, watch my feet. <laughs> watch my feet. I want to see you, Swami. Watch my feet. As he comes for darshan, I'm, I'm nearly forcing myself only to watch his feet because that's what he's saying I'm having to do. So I'm sitting there from the beginning watching his feet. I'm sitting on the first line so I have a good chance watching his feet. Suddenly, as he is in front of me, something changes totally in my mind. I am again that small little girl mm. and I'm walking with my little hand in this big hand. I can only see some orange rope and two feet with <laughs> whom I'm walking. And I am the most happy child you can imagine on earth. That's what I felt like. And that is with me for quite a while. I can see this for quite a while. And I feel like dancing. I'm just with him. No? Mm. He's going to do his work and I'm allowed to go with him. Yes. This is like being back in my childhood when my father goes to work, my mother sent me in holidays with him so I could be with my dad. Oh. Because I never saw my dad much in my youth because he was always working outside our town. To support a dozen people, sure, he had to be always working. Ah, correct. And he had to go there where there was the best pay. <laughs> no? Well, now I think the viewers who are used to watching Soldiers understands why Jody and I love looking you up whenever we come to Puta Party. You're, you've got such joy and, and love for Swami and love for life. Yeah. And yet the irony is, and I hope you don't uh, scold me for saying this, you're a recluse. You don't come out of your house except to go to work. You eat salads only. We've invited Maria over for lunch, and all she eats is salads. What to do? You know, we don't have salads in our kitchen. So, so uh, you're sort of odd. I might be. <laughs> because you keep to yourself and Swami all the time. Most of the time. Yeah. yeah. But I have still every day six hours to deal with everybody else who needs our help. Well, then you're not really in the world as we think of it, no, you're doing service to people true. who are who are really teaching you added compassion every yeah, day. And I start learning more and more to love from the job to just go and be. And be maybe, I don't know, in my room. So talk a little more about that because what does that look like just to be in your room? You have a lovely room, it's very tiny, it's very plain, it's, it's a very lovely beautiful. Room. And I, I, I feel, for me it's the whole world, because Swami is there. You have a picture of Mary there, I remember. You have Sorry? A, you have a picture of the Blessed Virgin Mother there, I believe. Yeah, there's a little statue and with you, Jesus. You, uh. And you have Jesus, and you have Baba, ah. and you have your, your salad fixings. I don't even think you eat rice anymore. Rice? No, not much. No much solid food except the 
salads and the fruits and the... And, is, and that we're all trying to practice non-attachment. Is that enough for you? You mean the food rice? Everything that's minimal. You have almost nothing there. You mean attachment? Yeah, is that enough for you? Are you, are you still attached to... I mean, you have to live, so you need a little food and a ah, little furniture. That is enough. What I take is enough. I don't look like I'm sick. I don't look like <laughs> I'm thin. I, I'm, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Because I honestly, I honestly believe whatever Swami has taught me <coughs> to eat as close to sattvic food as possible, it is life food, he calls it. So I know I get the best out of what he has provided on earth to stay healthy, to stay active, to stay awake, because that I get with my food from the plants and the vegetables and no? And just being. And fruits. It's all out there. The earth is one big pharmacy, I always think. Whatever we need, it's out there. As long as I get to know where to find it, <laughs> then I will use it. No? Maria, you, you use the word, uh, you go to your room to be. It feels like that. I think it is, but I, uh, can you explain to those of us, Swami often says, just be. Father Charles said, just be. And of course they mean just be love. How does one do this and also do seva and also do the things that life requires of us? How, do you, how does one just be and still uh, be active doing the things mm -hmm. that are required? What does it I mean? I don't know how that um, works just be. I think I'm just kind of switching off in my mind uh, about what is going on outside me. And I concentrate on Swami and most of the time now, after he has guided me to that, I concentrate on him many times as light in the heart chakra. Just concentrate with my mind. I need my mind for that because it's not that I am that already. I'm on my way to try and become that. Stillness, especially stillness. I become still. Not many thoughts. And just be happy. What about when you're not just rested? When you're hungry or uh. tired or sick or all three and somebody upsets you by saying something negative? Yeah. Then I am also, like everybody else, sometimes upset, sometimes not upset. Then I say to myself when I get really upset, ha little ego you were there. Eh? <laughs> because it's only through our ego we get upset. When we are connected to either you expect something or you think you are somebody, we are nothing. Through this, I think we get still that little pinch and then I know that is not cleaned out yet. Otherwise, I would not feel that pain. I think only through ego we experience pain. And that still happens to you? Of course, that happens to me also. There are all the vices from which we all have parts in us, and that is still there. The only thing I have to learn is shovel them on the side. You don't need them, because that is not bringing me anywhere. Jealousy doesn't bring me anywhere. Anger doesn't bring me anywhere. But it is still a part of me. But I don't necessarily let that come to the surface too much. Mm -hmm. How I'm sure Swami helps me to subdue those enemies we are having inside us. The, the part which we don't like about ourselves. But that is... If I'm aware of that he is helping me with that, I can concentrate on, and how do I do that? Because, of course, I have to do something for that. That means I have to become aware. Most of the things is awareness. I have to become aware that it is working like that in me. Oh, I got really annoyed with that person. Now, why <coughs> did I get annoyed? What really happened? And then sometimes I say, oh, that was also justified. Or 
I say that to myself, and then I'm ha then I will just accept it as that. <laughs> Sometimes anger can be useful also. Yeah. Now it's not always negative only. In the right place at the right time, you might have to ventilate something which the other person is not liking. But you have to say it. We are also doing a job. We are also being part of the of the vast human community. You don't have to accept everything. You don't become just a dull empty-minded somebody. No, there are values in life which I like to live with and which I like to update. No? And, and is this, I learned from Swami. And is this place, this ashram, a good testing ground for all those lessons to be learned? Everything I need to learn, I am convinced, is here. And why move here and live here and become a national here to begin with, when you could be learning these lessons in your hometown in the Netherlands. Yeah, I asked that same question to myself and as usual I will be busy with that question a couple of days. Whenever it comes in my mind I will ask Swami, now why do I want to be here? Why? And then when I let it go, I got the answer from Swami. He says, your soul wants to be with me. Uh -huh. And for me, with me still meant I want to be close to him, physically also. And because the closer I get to the physical divine being, it might just come a little bit my way also. <laughs> Something. Even now yeah. that he's in Mahasamadhi, you feel that? For me, Swami's not gone. Because the best experience I got was when he was in that glass, mm -hmm. what you call it, Casket, a coffin, or, coffin yeah. yeah. The first time he was standing there, and we were as devotees allowed to go around. I look at Swami's body lying there, but something in me is saying, "Oh, Swami, I am so happy." to see you resting and your eyes are closed and there is nobody I want this, I want that, can you do this for me, can you do that? You are allowed to rest mm -hmm. and from Swami I hear thank you for coming. <laughs> that made me feel so warm and I never, never, never needed to cry. Oh. Because I knew he's not gone anywhere, he is not, um, he has not disappeared from Prashanti Nilayam. I even feel he's more and faster able to answer our questions even. And, and the energy in the ashram has become for me, and I think because of we are not distracted by the form anymore, deeper to feel what Swami really was. That mm -hmm. energy on which we nourish ourselves. That's so well put. And is going to darshan something you do still regularly? Every day, because I'm going to take part in Namaskar. You go every day? Every day. Whenever I can, I will sit there. I will either do nothing and just sit there and enjoy the energy. Because when I walk in that hole, it's for me like getting a warm blanket around me. So I want, to, I want to go there. It feels good. I'll go in the mandir itself, greet him in the mandir. I'll go and sit on my place. I either chant with them or I don't chant with them. I sing bhajan with them. I love singing the bhajan. And then I go. Because going to the samadhi for me is his invitation to come and take Paranamaskar. As we wind down this conversation, which is just a delight, um, think about the people who are watching this who are either new to Baba or who have never seen his physical form or have never been to Puttaparthi before. And this place is changing. It's becoming a pilgrimage center more than it's becoming perhaps in the future or anything else. How would you advise them? Stay where you are in your country, in your town, and find Baba within come here once or come here occasionally, how would you advise them about their pursuing their Swami? 
See, I'm, I'm convinced that everybody is on his own level, on his way to, to become love. And whoever comes to Swami or is already at home in contact with the Divine, coming to Puttaparthi might be a beautiful experience energy-wise through the peace and stillness and quietness now in the ashram because it's actually only really busy when the celebration days are there. They are able, I think they will be able to just come to themselves out of their busy daily life where they normally are and come in contact with that part of themselves which we always said that was Swami. No, that part is ourselves. Seeing Swami, slowly, slowly we learn, Swami has only taken that form for us to learn that that is what we are. And that it takes time to sink in, in understanding, in accepting, in experiencing, in feeling, in growing more in our first our human values. I'm sure we have to, all of us have to grow in our human values which he has given to us to grow on. And slowly, slowly get to our divine being inside us. We all have that spark. There's nothing in life living without. We are creation, we are the sparks of the Creator. And you get time to come to that level, I think, if you are here, quietly sitting, or just enjoying what is here. You don't need to sit and, and, and meditate because Swami wants us to do and be. That means also be with the other people, enjoy what is there, enjoy what other people are doing. You are allowed to enjoy it, you are allowed to experience it, you are allowed to see it, you are allowed to do seva. We are so many things allowed to do. So I think that's fantastic. <coughs> Wonderful. Maybe a last question would be, from the many years and decades that you've worked treating the ailments of others uh, as a nurse, do they still teach you compassion, your patients? I have the impression that Indian people have a lot of compassion for their people because they have so much patience with each other and they can accept from each other so many things which for me coming from a totally different background, totally uh, different values in for example hygiene health, food. They, they accept each other as they are. Where I can very quickly think, why don't they do like that? They will become more healthy. Why don't they want it? So many years the doctors are telling them, eat this, do exercise, <coughs> try and be clean, at least your houses, your body, your clothes, try. But I can also see for many people, and that is also because we live up country, there are still people who have no water. What are we going to do? They have to walk miles and miles and miles to get their water. And they come to the hospital and they are dirty and they are not full of sores and Yet, nobody will tell them when they come and sit in the line, I don't want to sit next to you. No. They are very loving to each other, because I think that's love, if you accept that that is part and parcel of your um, people. You don't condemn. Mm -hmm. You might see it, but you don't, in your feelings, condemn that they are so dirty or smelly or whatever. No. Where well, we might do that, but we won't say it, but we might think that. And if you have the chance, move away. Maria, I want to get back to the, the
the just be directive that we get we all get from Baba mm -hmm. uh, to understand that more fully I know in the West um, many of our friends many of us study the Course in Miracles which Baba himself told Ted twice that he authored and in the Course in Miracles there's a sentence that says thou need do nothing mm -hmm. to me that's the same as this just be message that we get from you from Father Charles from Swami However, what's confusing to at least Westerners is it seems to imply that we don't involve ourselves in activities, that one must just be still. And yet we have duties every day. How does one just be while being a mother? How does one just be while being a nurse? Mm -hmm. How does one just be when there are duty to take care of your, of your husband, your house, going to work, while doing what Baba wants us to do is our duty. Yeah. Dharma. While doing Dharma. If I understand the question, there is um, just be is there. Yes. And there is you don't have to do anything. Yes. Right? Yes. And yet but, we all have Dharma that fills our days. Yeah. But I don't um, understand under I am that I am not doing anything because the I am is in the world. So whatever you're doing, you can be I am. I am doing the things being who I am. So just be love while doing dharma. Is this it? Exactly. It doesn't mean we have while to While trying to figure out to find the truth, while doing your job, whilst doing your duties in the hospital. And whenever I realize the contact is not there, then I'm also a different person. I can feel the difference if I walk up to a patient, if I'm connecting myself with the real me. Then I know I am different than if something happens and I get upset or whatever. Oh, I'm away from the center. Uh -huh. And then I, I'm different. I, I don't know how to explain that really, but I know I am not the love I want to be then, if I'm not connected. So it, what it really means, if I hear you correctly, is let the love that I am be and do while, I'm do it, while yeah. this body is doing dharma. Because the love, which is divinity, uh -huh. God, consciousness, the, all the words we use for love, what is love, that can work through us and I, that little I, the ego I, ego doesn't I. have to do anything. Okay. Because it is the higher part of me which is working through this body. That means Swami wants to work through us. He needs our physical frame to do the work he has to do. That is how I have understood it. And the sense with that, if we can get a grip on that, which is pretty big, then the sense of trying so hard fades away because that was ego. That it sense might. of trying urgency has a fear base, I think. Compulsiveness yeah. uh, might have been based in ego, whereas just being lets God do it. Yeah, right, exactly. And I think you will know the difference because when you are able to let go and say, Swami, you do it. That means my higher self, you do it, but we are going to do it. If Swami is going to do it through us, I have experienced, then things are kind of tak, 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 it works out perfect. Where if I, with my own will or I want, or I want, desire. Uh, then it is, it works out different and I have more trouble getting the things done. Is that an answer to what that you wanted to know? That is a great answer. I know I've been confused about this for years. I have very close friends who are confused about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we never knew how to interpret this directive. With, with our master on earth, we <coughs> are never asked to sit and meditate. To me, he has always said, 
no meditation for you. Your work is your meditation. Yet you meditate. He took. I never meditate. I thought you meditated every day. What are you doing in that tiny room for, for hours on it? Don't ask me because I don't know. <laughs> I'm not concentrated on what I'm doing. I'm just more concentrating on what I'm feeling. But this is important because I always thought you were one of the champion meditators. I know. Because for me, for me it's so hard and I feel guilty when I sit around you because you do meditation in my mind's eye so much better than me. There is no meditation for this lady here because Swami has told me in the interview room I was always so... Swami, I cannot sit like that. Can you make my legs go like that so I also can sit like that? He said, no sitting for you, no meditation for you, your work is your meditation. Oh, beautiful. So I feel the more concentrated I can be when I'm there, and the more aligned with what I feel, I can do my work the best I can. And then I get pulled out because something is happening. And then I can pull out, get pulled out and something is happening there. But every time I know I have to go back and center. And that is big for me. I don't know if other people have a different uh, experience with that or what, I don't know. But this is for me trying to be who I really am. Let him do the work through me. So you would call you, so would Swami call you a karma yogi, yogini? I have no clue. Rather than a bhakti or uh, I, I question myself a few times. What in, in in which category? Because there are categories though, and I think, are you Swami, I think, can we not just be a little bit of everything? Yes, yes. Best. I'm so glad Jody asked this question because now it leads me to one final question. Uh -huh. I know you work very hard every day and... and now not so hard anymore. Okay. Think, because but on Sundays is your day off? No, any time of the day, week okay. I can have a day so off. So when you have your days off, I know it takes you all of, oh, probably 20 minutes to make your salad and to tidy up your room. How do you spend the rest of the day when you don't have work and you're not, and you're not busy meditating because we now know you don't sit for hours on in, in meditation. How do you make your presence to Baba felt in a way that's meaningful to you and to Baba? There are of course lots of people here with whom we have contact. There are people who need to come, who need somebody to come and see to them because they, know, get, they don't get any visitors, they don't get anybody to show them how to take the medicine or whatever. There, are, there is always something which Swami puts in front of you to deal with. So you and if it is not for others, I can sit at home in my room, I have to answer my mails if people have sent me an email. I want to see your interviews which you have <laughs> sent on Soldiers. Uh, soldiers, and I want to see a good film. Ah, very ah, good. good! Yeah, there is a friend who sends me now and again a load full of films oh. in my computer, and I think, which one shall we see tonight, Swami? <laughs> it's Swami because watching. he has to watch with me now. <laughs> <laughs> very good, thank you. Yeah. Oh, how's now? That's your question? No, no. Ask Maria, Living please. in the now. <laughs> Swami said to you, when I came in 2002 to put a party from Whitefield and started working in the hospital here, the very first visit Swami came to the hospital and at the end of Swami's presence there when he's about to go, photo session. So we all around Swami, groups, Yes. photo session. Yes, so that. I'm sitting there. I want to go and stand behind Swami and say, you sit here. So I'm sitting there. And I'm so happy just sitting there. Then he's talking to everybody as if in between he's just asking this <coughs> question. How is now? <laughs> now Swami is very good because I'm sitting right here at your feet. <laughs> I didn't think of anything else. Mind is blank. So now is always the Omnipresence. Yeah. If I can learn to live in the now, then I can be in the now always.
and with Swami always. That means being is, that is not my ego then anymore. No. <laughs> as You're far as I know. such a delight, Maria. Thank that's, you so much. That's just be. That yeah. is just be what I am. That must be consciousness, love, you light. We're continuing about the you need do nothing quote from A Course in Miracles and also about Swami's telling us to just be. And it was more clearly explained, you told me a story that was more clearly explained, yeah. or very clearly explained for the Western mind, and that you said to Swami, I need to go get my visa. Uh -huh. And he said, I'll take care of everything. He said this to you inside, and you said, um, but Swami, you won't go to the visa office. I have to do that. And he said, you go ahead. Yeah. I was in the process of getting an extension for my visa mm -hmm. because I was in the process of getting citizenship. Mm -hmm. And that means you have to go many times to the official places in Bangalore or Hyderabad or whatever where you are registered to get the papers processed. So I'm sitting there at home filling out papers and I'm getting a little bit upset because sometimes I don't know what to write. Plus, I don't find it very pleasant to be in those offices. And I'm, one evening I'm sitting there in front of Swami in my room and say, Swami, how am I going to go about this here? So many things they ask, so many things I have to do. How am I supposed to do this all? Don't worry. You don't have to do anything. I am doing everything for you. You going to Bangalore to the office <laughs> to process my papers? No, that will not happen. You will not go. I, this body has to go, of course. That I understand. But how do I go about it? Because I don't know everything. Then he puts me in contact with a lawyer from Delhi. You called the lawyer? I called the lawyer. He, sp he comes and speaks and he explains to me, I have to do that and that and that and that. He will take care of the rest. I said, Swami, you're really doing it then? Because through that lawyer, you are doing it for me. And that man has really done the hard work until nearly the last end. And now I'm getting my passport soon. Again, he puts a young man here in Puttaparthi on my road who says, I will go to uh, Tirupati and find out exactly what papers you need. I said, are you? Yeah, I also need a passport, so it's good for me also to uh. know. Indian person. Uh -huh. And he comes back, he gives me the information, I do whatever he says, we go there. Within one and a half hour we are standing outside and everything is processed. Thank you, Swami, because <laughs> you are the one who has done everything for me through these two people and maybe also a few other ones, but these are the two special people. And um, the words you used a few minutes ago that were really helpful to me, and I know to many of my friends, were Swami arranges your body to, to be present when things have to be done, but the ego is not the doer. You just follow direction from within and he takes care of everything. Even though we have to use the body, the body is the vehicle, either for Swami or for me, when I'm not in the state of letting Swami do it, I might use my ego. And then I will do it with this body and struggle like anything. But if I am in contact with the core of myself, which for me is in physical form Swami, but that is the real me, He is doing through me, but this body needs to be used. And is it, and you say there's very little effort when that happens? Very often, when I know afterwards, that was Swami. It goes like, tuck, 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 things are getting done. That means for me, it was planned like this, I was at the right place, at the right time, with the right people, and Swami could do the work. So no pushing, no trying? No shoveling, no nothing then. <laughs> that is really nice. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for being so loving and so open. You want to catch that phone?
Nope. And, and to really share with us some of the lessons that you've learned from this long, long trip across the seas to Sai Baba's ashram while he walked the pathways here and now especially after his Mahasamadhi, mm. you continue to find his love. Yeah, definitely. And may that continue forever. That will be forever. That will never go. It's eternal. No? Thank you, Maria. It's yeah. always a delight to find you here. Saira. Thanks for having me. Saira. He gave me also a wonderful dream in which I'm standing with him inside that alley and the gate is getting thrown by hundreds of people and I'm in the front. I'm also there. I'm standing here with Swami but I'm also there. And then I see